Good morning and welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We know during this time that we are in fact worshiping in so many different places, from our easy chairs, our kitchen tables, our living rooms, out for a walk. And so this morning we too are coming to you from a different location. And so we join our hearts and our minds and our spirits together across the distance to worship our God together. Let us join in our responsive call to worship. Blessed be God, whose word gives light and shapes our understanding. Our souls long for you, O Lord. Blessed be God, whose face shines upon us. Be gracious to us, merciful Savior. Blessed be God, who guides our way and steadies our steps. Lead us into life, Holy One. God has shaped the world, and God shapes each one of us to be in communion with each other and with our Creator. But we form lives that move away from God. So as we come to this time of worship, let us join together in our unison prayer of confession that will be followed by a time for silent prayers. Let us pray. God of mystery, God of life, we imagine that we are capable judges of righteousness, wisdom, and goodness. We trust our own standards, and we use them to separate, categorize, 
and mark the preferences of others. We fail to wait on your power, hidden in unlikely form. We fail to watch for you as you work out your purposes through the smallest of things. Gracious God, mysterious and manifest, transform our withered imaginations until we yield our trusted judgments to your love, which we cannot control. Amen. Please join with me in our responsive assurance of pardon. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Sisters and brothers, nothing we have done, nothing we will ever do, is enough to separate us from the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice then in the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning. In our Bible lesson today, people wanted to know what the kingdom of heaven was like. And the only person who knew the answer to that question was Jesus. Jesus said it was like a mustard seed. Well, that's kind of confusing. Then he said it was like yeast that we use for bread. Then he talked about treasure in a field and a pearl. And finally, he talked about a big fishnet. Well, all of that is a little bit confusing. What kind of kingdom does Jesus tell us about? He tells us that the kingdom is all about love. We know that the mustard seed will grow and God's love is like that. We know that when yeast is added to bread, it makes it puff up. And just a little love can have a big impact in someone's life. And what about the pearl and the treasure? We may think that those things are valuable, but there is nothing here on earth that is as valuable as the kingdom of heaven. What about the fish net? Well, just like a net, a big net can fit, catch a lot of fish, the kingdom of heaven can hold all of us. So it's big enough for everybody. When we have love in our lives, we will go and join that kingdom. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to tell us about your love. Help us to make that love grow and help us to remember that your love is big enough for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Spirit of life, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Meet us in words written, in words spoken. Intercede for us with sighs too deep for words until we shine with the hope that is hidden in our hearts. For we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. With open mouth I pant, because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your custom toward those who love your name. Keep my steps steady according to your promise, and never let iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because your law is not kept. Our second scripture reading today comes from Matthew 13, 31 through 33 and 44 through 52. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. In verses 44 through 52, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. So how many of you found yourselves jumping on the quarantine bandwagon and venturing into the world of bread making and gardening for the first time? Over these past months, my social media has been alight with bread recipes, contactless swapping of sourdough starter, APBs on which supermarkets had yeast that day, pictures of mouth-watering loaves fresh from the oven, questions of where to get the best seeds as local suppliers sold out, exchanges on how to construct container gardens, and pleas for virtual help as young plants wilted beneath some blight unknown to the novice gardener. It suddenly seemed like the entire urban and suburban world was swept up in these age-old but long-ignored practices of making and growing food from scratch. And why? Well, suddenly a whole lot of people were at home with a whole lot of time on their hands, as we know. Or they were looking for some good time-consuming and non-electronic activities for their squirrely children. Never before had they had time and space to let dough rise, to tend germinating seeds, to pull the weeds threatening seedling plants, or to wait patiently for squash, lettuce, or peppers to grow. If you have taken up either of these quarantine activities, then you've witnessed Jesus's parables in action in a way many of us modern folk don't usually experience. You've seen up close just how much can come from something so small, teeny tiny yeast and teeny tiny seeds. And if you're like me, and just laugh at the concept of more time right now. As childcare takes over your work time and work and dishes and laundry take over all the rest of the time, well, at least you've seen the pictures. We've heard these parables many times. They illustrate for us the sheer abundance, exponential growth, and transformative power that characterize God's kingdom. The smallest of mustard seeds sprouts into a tree-like shrub that houses the birds of the air. Once planted, that seed transforms into something entirely new. A woman mixes yeast with enough flour to make bread for a small army. The yeast transforms the dough from something flat, hard, and tasteless into the bedrock of virtually every diet of the world. God chooses the smallest of things to bring about God's purposes in the world. And once God's kingdom springs up among us, there's no telling how wildly it will spread or how high it will rise. Nothing will remain the same. By using humble, everyday activities for his parables, Jesus also tells us the kingdom of heaven isn't something otherworldly or remote. 
It has nothing to do with marble halls, gold and jewel encrusted crowns, or opulent displays of wealth and power. Instead, it's something far earthier, more accessible and closer at hand. The kingdom of heaven is as ordinary as bread and plants growing from the soil, and it's just as life-giving. Jesus' choice of imagery speaks to us, too, of some other essential elements of this kingdom. Space and time. We know seeds need space and time to germinate and grow, and dough needs space and time to rise, which is why gardening and bread making were so uncommon in our modern, rapid-paced, overscheduled, instant gratification lives before COVID-19 struck. Similarly, God's kingdom needs space and time to flourish. It does not spring fully formed from nothing. It doesn't arrive with fanfare great enough to draw our attention from our many distractions and preoccupations. Rather, it struggles up slowly toward the light and first shows itself as an easily missed green shoot unfurling from the soil. It rises bit by bit by bit in the hidden warmth of the bread bowl, almost impossible to see if you were to watch it steadily. As individuals and as a church, we now exist in an in-between time. COVID-19 has exiled us from what was, from the rhythms and routines and mode of operation that made us who we were. It halted our headlong dash through life and cut away so many of our cherished activities. And this has been painful. We don't like this wilderness in which we've found ourselves. We don't like feeling so uncertain, so lost, so insecure. Our new hobbies are all well and good, but as the weeks have turned into months, our yearning to go back to normal has only grown. We look behind us at what was and just want to reclaim it. Every day, we see this impulse flashing up across our country with life-threatening results. Yet, as the weeks have turned into months, and this uncertain reality stretches indefinitely into the future, we know deep down that there will be no simple going back from this exile. We will be a fundamentally different people because of this experience we will be a different church. As we continue to chart our way forward as a congregation, we can and will reclaim some familiar things. But we also have fresh opportunity to embrace the lessons of bread making and gardening, the lessons of these parables. As people of faith, I believe we genuinely want more kingdom in our lives. We want to be co-creators of this new reality with God. We want to herald the good news of the kingdom's arrival among us whenever we see it poking up through the ground. We want to experience this powerful transformation and to trust that, small as we are, Small as our contributions may appear, God can and will use us to bring about God's purposes for the world. But in order for that to happen, we need to cultivate space and time. The seeds and yeast of the kingdom need free space an unstructured time to do their creative work. 
We need to clear away some of the usual debris of programs, activities, chores, work, and endless doing in order to watch and wait for the Spirit's leading. There are many ways we can do this together. We can dive deeper into scripture to hear how God's word speaks to us in this moment. We can promote creative space to innovate and test out new ways of being. We can purposefully and prayerfully watch the world around us for the signs of new life to which God is calling us in this moment. We can listen intently to each other and to our neighbors and share our concerns and struggles. As a small group within our congregation is already doing as part of a wider community organizing effort here in Morristown. We can help each other to trust that God holds us firm even when we feel like we're free falling into nothing. And we can herald the whispers of the Spirit whenever we think we hear them. And we can weigh whatever it is we've heard together. Waiting for seeds to grow and bread to rise goes against our societal grain. We are acculturated to do, 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 especially in the face of uncertainty and destabilization. We have been taught that stillness and idleness are the same thing and that both are equally bad. When the natural world Jesus turns to so regularly tells us they clearly are not. The sown field and the kneaded dough appear still, but they are far from idle. Theirs is a stillness with purpose. A stillness that leads to the emergence of something new and even unexpected. Our spiritual work right now is to keep learning when to wait and when to act. To discern between what is ours to do and what is God's to do. And to leave room for the unexpected to rise up among us and suggest fresh ways for us to show up to the world as the body of Christ. I feel in my bones how vital free space and unstructured time are to the flourishing of anything. I think most of us do when those are in short supply. This call to cultivate more space and time for God, for germination and fermentation, for the emergence of God's kingdom rings loud and true within me. But I also must confess that I hear my own words and think, yeah, right, no way that can happen in my life right now. As I said in the beginning, time is a commodity that is especially unequally distributed during these COVID-19 days. Luckily for us, this is a collective call to us as a church. It's not dependent on the situation or abilities of any one of us as individuals. Rather, we do this with and for each other, each to the degree we are able in any given moment. Together, we build the space. Together, we take the time. Together, we listen and wait. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, our rock and salvation, we give thanks for this opportunity to join together in worship, to have the means to worship as a community, even though we are not in the same space. Yet we know that you are present in all space and through you we are one. We give thanks for music that touches us deeply, penetrating where mere words alone cannot reach 
and brings us more fully into your presence. We are blessed weekly with the musical gifts that are shared. We are grateful, as were the generations that have come before us, for the witness to the living word that was read and shared. We pray that our attentiveness to these words will bring Christ to reside deeply within our lives, producing growth and multiplying as an offering of our lives to you. On this day, we pray that we may be aware and be willing to remove all the little things that grow and produce that which moves us away from you and others. We know that it is so often the little things that merge together into a gulf of separation hurts, slights, condescending thoughts, apathy. May these be confessed and removed so that we can clear space for the living word to flourish in our lives. We know as you are present in all space, you are present to all our challenges and concerns on this day. We specifically lift up April, Hal, Carolyn, and we know there are many others that we have concern for, no matter where we may be as we worship. And now in silence, we lift up those concerns on our hearts and minds. We now share in the unity that transcends our distance and join in the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be my 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and help you to create space and time to experience all that God wishes to grow within you and through you. Amen.